emails and do all this marketing and <laughs> remind them three times. <laughs> You're like, you ready? Okay, boom. <laughs> Nate, I learned to be a master servant from my aunt, man. The more you serve, it's like you give away free hamburgers. You know, it's like who the heck would show up? <laughs> I see. We're giving them away free. Uh, what is it? My wife loves T-bone steak. Today we're giving away a T-bone steak. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did your aunt do to teach you this, man? She was oh, she was a uh, she was a master servant in the church musical category like showing up teaching uh, are you familiar with satb in the choir no, no soprano alto tenor bass i wasn't i wasn't a trump major sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> she taught music so anyway I, I saw her show up to play piano nate uh, every sunday forever you know i'm like this woman is amazing she practiced taught taught the choir so i'm like okay i see how it's done uh, is this yeah. the one that that recently passed? Yeah, your George. teacher, your you mentor. Know. Yeah, man. But thank you for asking, though. How you doing? Everything okay out there in the uh, Midwest? Yeah, yeah. We just had uh, Grandma and Grandma show up. So what? Yeah, yeah. We got a full house. That's I gotta nice. gotta remember to shut the bathroom door again now. We got <laughs> guests everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, Nate, we'll give a few more people to log on here and give them a little time. <clears throat> Anytime I can get you on a, on a live, Nate, it's just an honor, my friend. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And uh, the feeling's mutual. I, I love what you're doing, though. That's the most important thing. I, I did a little post before I jumped on to encourage people to, whether they can attend this or not, at least subscribe to your channel. Because yeah. what you're doing, and you've mentioned, you're just you're giving out T-bone steaks. You're doing it. <laughs> And it's important for people, especially as they start their real estate investing journey. Yeah, that's right. Especially when you're starting to, you know, what's crazy. I was thinking, we'll let them get on. Nate. I'm just trying to put my mind in the Europeans that came over here and took a, took the Indians out regarding signing their name on that independence document. Nate, what do you think they were thinking, man? When they took, took the Indians out? Well, when they came over here and they signed the independence yeah. document, and they were like, uh, you know, forget you guys, we're gonna start our own thing over here. Mm. Mentally, I feel like they were, they were no doubt committing suicide doing that. But I'm just like they were killing their former selves. Like, like you know what? That old me is done. This new me from here forth. This is America. We're taking over. It's just crazy to think the mindset that they were in. You know? It is. It is. Um, I can only kind of reflect on history a little bit with it. That was during the the era that preceded that. Was the British Empire just kept expanding? in british yeah. imperialism all over the world so they probably all over all, the world. they all thought that they were entitled you know what i saw a great post yesterday from a friend that said that we are entitled to this comprehensive list this huge comprehensive list it, and it looks exactly like this a blank sheet of paper oh man i love it this is what we are entitled to <laughs> <laughs> and and those the the folks that came over and thought that they were entitled to just take land that they weren't entitled to. No, no, none of us are entitled to anything. We got to go out there and earn it. Got to work for it, Nate. Mm -hmm. You have to make a decision to do it now. We're gonna yeah. work for this right now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That is it. I, I see so many people that get to like the five yard line. They try, they push. It's kind of a hobby thing. And if they would just punch it in if they would just push it and just make it a priority then that's where they'd see success but so many people sh stop short they just don't know how close they really are and it does take that right now attitude i'm going to make yeah. it happen right now right now this is what i will do nate that's what you're doing that's what we're going to be talking about today roundup family greetings my real estate roundup <clears throat> homies this is chris haskins you know my mission and ministry i didn't get a mission until my cash flow needs were met by the way is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship roundup today that in doing that i get to hang out with some winners and i promise you this dude today nate is just a beast when it comes to automation systems social media business management time management the guy has his schedules this i've seen him hop on calls hop on webinars meetings with people and i have no idea how he does it but he's got this thing down to down to a system uh, with the system in in his in his time management too. Nate Armstrong, thanks for hanging out with us, my friend. 
Chris, always a pleasure, man. It's it's a pleasure to be back on on the show with you. Yeah, cool. my brother. And, and it's a special time now. We got Independence Day, and we got some fun stuff to go through today. Oh, halfway through the year, this is that time when when uh, people got to scratch their heads and say, "Have I hit my mid year goals?" Hmm. You know, we all get a little little fun on January first or December thirty first, writing out these goals, and then usually by three months into the year, we forget about those goals. But this is the time where we get to actually step back and say, hold on a second here. And is 2020 going to be different for me? Am I actually going to hit my goals? And that's what I like to do right here, right now. Of course, we've got the holiday around the corner, but I, I like to know, am I on track? Am I going to do it? And today I'm going to be sharing what, what we're doing right now. Like we hit the turbocharge button about four weeks ago and some cool stuff came out of it. So I'm going to be sharing that today. Yes, yeah, seven deals. Good Lord, Nate. I know people, you know, it's weird. You meet guys that are doing seven deals and then you run across people that have not, never done a deal just to kind of bring them over the hump. And so they can maybe stop having it as a hobby and making it a, a, a real business. Nate, can you, you're going to be able to share some of that stuff today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like <clears throat> hobby, hobby transitioning to full time. That's I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit the hacks, the social media hacks that are working for us. I'm going to go through some actual ads that okay. people can run on Facebook <laughs> now. Um, so they'll be able to t pick that up and be able to run with it. I'm going to go nice. through a really special ad hack that's generating a lot of a lot of engagement for us right now. Cool. Uh, thank you for the thank you for your time, Nate. Round up, please. As Nate uh, goes on with his training today, you can ask him any question. I promise you won't be able to get him on the line. Um, he's not available for these type of things all the time. So get your questions in the chat box. Nate, are you going to have time for Q&A today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get rolling, Nate. So I guess why is it important? You, I mean, I, I'll let you go ahead and rock with it, brother. Cool, cool. So I'm gonna share my screen and um and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna actually show behind the scenes. I got some good screenshots of what we're doing to make this whole social media stuff work and what it really meant for us. It translated into seven deals in 17 days. Um and it, all in the middle of this whole thing that like this COVID craziness that we're in. So this stuff is working for today's market right here, right now. Nice. So, cool. Am I am I good to share screen and go? Hit. Well, you got to. Uh, you have to click the button. I don't see your screen on here for me to bring it in yet. <clears throat> okay. Let me do that. How about there? Mm -mm. Go ahead. Nope. You'll see share screen. Then you have to actually select your screen. You got to hit it twice. Chrome lost permission. For some reason, Chrome lost permission. Well, I will try to minimize it then and then do it this way. It may have been because I was attempting to do it full screen. So I'll bring it down here. We'll try it down here. <coughs> Just bear with this roundup a little technical issues here comes with part of the business. How's that? Did that go? <clears throat> make sure you're not you don't have your anything up in Zoom. I know Zoom can make that funny too. Oh. <clears throat> if you hit share screen, your screen should pop up. Then you have to select another one after that. Okay, I got to walk through a couple of different steps. It says uh, system prep security. Okay. Bear with me for a second. Chris, you just got, um, tell me, give me a quick update too on the leads that you're getting from social right now. Yeah, you know what I found out? I, I met with my admin. Thanks to you. I appreciate that. Roundup, Nate, we're, we're moving a lot of our budget over to uh, social media. Obviously, I, I love social media. But Nate, I don't understand why Hampton Roads is one of the highest budgets in the country. I just your, don't. Your area? Yes, I was talking to the Mar Marla yesterday. She did this whole. She's showing me California, Philly, and I'm looking at Hampton Roads. We're almost double some of the 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 prices in other areas. And she said it's not necessarily based on um, real estate, but just people spending money on Facebook in general. So the leads are coming in. Matter of fact, I was going to ask you to help me with one. I've been working with for about a month and a half, man. She's almost on the, on the line. But they're coming in like clockwork, brother. It all depends on 
the dial, like you said, do you want to dial it up, dial it back? How much do you want to spend? It's all based on that. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Um, and which one are you working? Which one's kind of held back a little bit? Pretty houses. Yeah, I like that. Pretty. Yeah, we got uh, more more take over the payments from people that are furloughed. They kind of want to. Now that they're furloughed, they want to have they want to figure out what they're going to do when the furlough is over because they're unemployed. I'm getting a lot of that. <clears throat> yeah. And there's a, I just actually heard an NPR broadcast that they actually froze during that freeze, uh, a backlog of evictions basically just got brought it forward to us too. So in my County where I'm doing most of my investing, there's a spike July 1st. That was the first day that evictions can be filed in, foreclosures can be filed mm -hmm. and there's a spike of 40 percent year over year on the first of july wow yesterday so it's pretty fast um yeah my uh my screen's not letting me do it can i okay. send, can i send this to you and i'm just going to talk I'm yeah let me send it over. is it a what is it what, what what type of file is it it's a it's a, a google slide deck yeah let's do it so it should be fairly easy for us to share that way Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here. Roundup, you have been so kind to hold the one as Nate and I have these. We're not technical people. Real estate people. Yeah, we, <laughs> we do our best. Nate, you just tell me when to move forward, brother. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so uh let's go ahead, let's move forward. Yeah. Hit it. View only. Yeah, we're view. Hit it, so brother. what we're going to be talking about right now is this. Um, I've got in my hands right signed contracts. They look like this. Nice. Most people know them. If you don't, it's just a purchase agreement. And the most important thing is that uh, you can see that both husband and wife sign these things if they're a seller, mm -hmm. if they're the seller, and then we sign it as a buyer. And we've been really perfecting this process. We've got now seven of them in the last 17 days. And I don't I don't at all say that to like boast or brag or anything like that. It's simply because I want to show you the system behind it. There's mechanics to it. So what we're going to be getting into is the mechanics of how we're getting these things systematically. Starts with a Facebook ad. <clears throat> okay. Um, after the Facebook ad, an ad by itself is not going to get the job done. There's some sequential steps. We call it a campaign. The campaign is where all the magic happens. Okay. So what we're going to learn today is this. We're going to learn a system that brings in quality seller leads that actually want your help. And I want to pause for a second and say want your help because it's very different than what maybe other lead sources you've tried before. You may have tried things like cold calling, direct mail. You may have even tried things like going out with a realtor making offers. All of those things are you asking for a property to come to you and um, are you going out and asking cold calling, especially you have to like dial people and ask them, Hey, are you ready to sell? Are you ready to sell? It's a very different feeling when you've got someone that comes to you and then asks you for your help. Can you help me with my property? And that's the, the, the mantra that we really want to go after. And then Chris, if we could advance a little bit, I want to advance to the waterfall slide. And can you see it okay? Oh, yeah. We're good, brother. I'm sorry. I thought you could see it. Please forgive me. Oh, yeah, we're did good, I lose bro. you? I may have lost you. Man, we have an all type of drama today with me, aren't we, guys? <clears throat> I might have lost you. I'm going to see if it'll work now. Chris, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, brother. You can hear me. I just can't hear you. Okay. Uh, if you want to go and back there yourself out and come back in. Me. Speaker internal. Now. One, two, one, two. All right. Now we're good. Okay. All right. Thank so I got you. the waterfall up. If you can't see that, it's up now. Okay. Awesome. Fantastic. So um, just a little bit about me. When I started in this business, like I literally, I struggled just like everybody else to figure this stuff out. And it took me a while to get it. I'm going to go through that little bit of a journey in just a second here. 
Um, but I want everyone to know like this stuff, if you've struggled with this before, it's part of the process. It's part of the journey. I, yeah. No one just walks in one day and says, I'm a real estate guru. I'm a real estate superstar. It's not possible. And I struggled like, like everybody else. I'm a man of God. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Those are my three roles in life first. And then this work stuff, this investing, this comes after all of those. And um, that's just my levels of priority in life. And I, I try to let it shine in everything that I do. And um, uh, what I did to get into this business is I actually started knocking on doors. I went door to door, knocking, knocking, knocking. So I know all about the tough methods of getting deals. And what I figured out when I was in the door knocking thing is that there were things, there were hacks, kind of like what we're gonna talk about today that help increase conversions. And there were hacks that also didn't work so well. And one of the hacks that I figured out in the door knocking days is that usually when a homeowner would see you coming up to the door, you give it the knock, knock, knock. And then if they had a dog, the dog would start barking and then they would immediately want to just shut the door and they'd be like, oh, there's a solicitor here. I'm going to shut the door. And what I started doing is I started carrying dog biscuits in my pocket. And so when I'd hear the dog bark, even before the homeowner opened the door, I would throw the dog biscuit down and then the homeowner would look at me and be like, okay, that was pretty clever. What are you selling? And then I would get a chance to start talking. And that little hack right there, what it did to my conversion was tremendous. It used to take me over 30 doors to get one potential deal, to get one person to actually have a conversation with me, 30 doors. And then after I started doing the dog biscuits, it nearly cut it in half. It turned it to one in 17, one in 17. So it cut my time almost in half by doing that little hack. So when we talk about some of these Facebook things today and other social media strategies, I want you to think of it that way. Like, how can I cut my time in half? How can I cut my budgets in half? How mm -hmm. can I double my profit in essence by following some of these hacks? So um, that's how I started though, door knocking. I ended up getting into um, buy, fix and sell. I flipped a bunch of houses. Eventually the flips generated enough cash where I was able to take that and get into a big development project. The development project didn't go so good. Um, if you've ever heard folks like stumble along their real estate journey, that was my stumbling block big time. It was a $6 million development project. I was supposed to be the person that guaranteed the loans by signing my name on them. And then I've had to provide some cash and that was my job. And the developer was supposed to do everything else. Well, six months into the project, the developer came back to me and said, Nate, I'm so sorry, but these projects are upside down. I, I have to get out. I'm done. I resign. And I'm like, what? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Because I'm the guarantor on the loans and we got to get these things done. And he said, no, nope, it's not worth it. I already figured it out. We're upside down. The city wants us to do more work than we originally thought. And it's never going to make it. So you might as well just get out now. Wow. Yeah. At that moment, like I was, I was panicking. Like I, 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 I downsized my family because I knew that there was a massive cash injection needed on this thing. Um, it was the first time I learned in my life about what a real, they call it a burn rate. Like when you have monthly expenses on a project and I never really understood the expression until this, this time it was a burn rate because we were burning $50,000 per month to pay for the mortgage payment, the taxes, the insurance, and then some of the general guys to keep the place going. And I wasn't making 50 grand per month. Um, I, I wasn't generating that kind of income at that time. And so for me, I, I was like, I didn't know what to do, but I downsized. We went from a suburbs house to a one bedroom apartment. Uh, my family basically just kind of huddled together and I had everybody around me tell me, just quit, Nate, get out of this thing. Like, just give it back to the bank. Who cares? The bank will, the bank will um, damage your credit, but no big deal. And, and kind of in that darkest moment that I had, it was my wife that actually came to me and she said, you know, uh, we have to remember that we have to enjoy life, whether we're in a good time, a good season or a bad season. And she gave me a lot of Bible quotes around this, but she said, we got to enjoy life and you got to start connecting with people again. You've been <clears throat> dreading this and fearing this. And all you do is think about it all day long. You got to get out there. And for me, getting out there was exactly um, what actually led to, to this discovery of social media. I went on social media and I started reconnecting with friends, started finding friends again, started reconnecting and and then the next thing I knew on face on Facebook, I saw in my newsfeed, another real estate investor posting almost a house a day. And for me, it was like, wow, how is this possible? And he kept saying, I got another one using Facebook. I got another one using Facebook. I got this one off Instagram. I did this one from Facebook. And I just, I'm like, whoa, if this guy's doing this, I got to figure this out. So I reached out to him 
And I, I said, Hey, will you teach me this stuff? And he said, okay, I'll teach you it. I'll have to charge you, but I'll teach you. So he ends up teaching me. I pay the guy and he ends up teaching me. And within my first three weeks, I got five seller signed contracts. Wow. And that for me, Chris, that was like a moment where if you're, if you're going through the desert and you're lost and you haven't had water in three days, that's like getting, getting a waterfall in front of you. And um, so I got five seller signed contracts. And then once I saw that, like that was only the beginning, like for us, it, it led to, and if you could scroll to slide 23, it's a picture of me holding the check. That, that was my first hundred thousand dollar month that I ever had. Like, once we figure this stuff out and um, I don't know if, if you've ever like, anyone out there that's gotten into the real estate business before, when you're going from fighting and struggling and all of a sudden having a breakthrough like that, it, it's such a triumphant moment because it makes you believe that you can do more. And I, mm -hmm. prior to that, I had never been able to hit a hundred thousand dollars, never. Mm -hmm. And, and then that belief ended up fueling more and more. And we ended up finishing the Chicago projects, the big development projects and <laughs> um, lost our butts, but we got them done. And then the, the, we were off to the races then, uh, in 2016, it was 117 properties, 2017, 124 properties. And we've maintained this pace since then. We've been able to basically just go and go and go and keep going. And, uh, eventually we made the Inc 500, which is a pretty cool award for a privately held company to make a big, big company award like that. Nice. Um, now I know for a lot of people you're like, okay, well, Nate, great. Well, what, what about me? And if you could go to um, slide 31, I want to cover these three things. We're going to cover the three <clears throat> most important things when using social media in the real estate business for you to start getting deals right now. So we're at this point where maybe this is full-time for you. Maybe it's part-time. And I would appreciate actually, if you'd let me know, I can tailor some of this section to you. Um, if it's part-time right now, go ahead, type part-time in the chat. If it's full-time for you right now, go ahead and type full-time. And then additionally, let me know what kind of deals you're trying to get. Are you trying to do wholesale? Are you trying to do fix and flip? Are you trying to do buy and hold? Subject to, just give me just a, a one or two word answer. And then as I see those comments come in, then um, I'm going to tailor some of the messaging in here for you. So uh, the first thing that I want to bust a myth on in this three secrets that we're going to cover, these three hacks is that a lot of people will say, well, I just need more leads. If I had a bunch of leads, then all my problems would be solved. And I want to give some truth to that. The, the truth is that you need more quality leads. That's usually the, the biggest difference. Um, getting a list of cold call names, hundreds of names on it, numbers, if you got that list and you're expected to outbound call these people who don't know you, that is not what you need more of. That's an example of more leads. Instead, what you need is you need some sellers that see your ad that come to you and say, Hey, I saw your ad. Can you help me? That's a quality lead. That's what you want more of in this business. And if you could go to slide 32, the next one, Chris, um, this is what I ended up doing. So after I figured out and got the system going, I wanted to make it much bigger. So I didn't know enough about social media platforms at the time where I really trusted myself. So I went and hired an agency. I hired this agency. I paid him 12 grand. I paid him three separate payments. I copied the wire transfers here because I was a little bit in disbelief afterwards, uh, but I copied them. And um, this company, they built this sophisticated funnel for me and I ended up getting zero deals out of it. Big fat wow. goose egg. Yeah. Wow. It's insanity. And uh, I got a little, little crabby about it naturally because I didn't get any deals out of it, but I, I, I didn't want to sit around and mope. So I went on to the next agency. I hired them um, at slide 33 and then slide 34. I've hired a third one. And what I found with each of these agencies, because they're so spread out and they use so many, they go after so many different clients, attorneys, grocery stores, dentists, like they have a hodgepodge of businesses that they're managing that they don't know how to do what you and I know how to do as a real estate investor. Yes, you and I might not know how to work social media ads yet, but it's not that complicated. And I want to show some of that stuff today. So when I hired all these agencies and I got little to no results from them, I spent a bunch of money. I wasted it. I'll never get it back. I learned that um, I am my own best marketer on the team by far. 
Yes, a little bit of guidance helps to learn the platforms, but I'm my own best marketer. I'm the one that's going to bring in new business for the company. Okay. Um, if you go to slide 36, the biggest problem with these other marketing agencies is that they just don't know how to talk to your exact client. And I'll give you an example of this. There's a very big difference between someone that's going through COVID crisis, behind on payments right now, financially strapped, and someone that maybe is a probate seller, someone that, you know, a probate seller, they just inherited the house from mom or dad generally, or an aunt or uncle, and their positions in life are totally different. And a marketing agency, because they don't know the conversation that's going on inside the head of your ideal seller, they don't know how to capture them. And I'm going to actually show you and talk through some of the ads for like the probates that we do in a little bit here. But you got to be able to speak to your exact audience member that you want. If you're trying to just blanket market, it doesn't work anywhere near as well. Like we buy houses signs as an example, they can pull in some traffic, but it would work a lot better if you had a retargeting ad that had the exact copy on it that entered the conversation that's going on inside the head of your seller. Okay. So eventually I ended up taking back over my own ads. I I'd done with the agencies um, and I just decided I was going to do it on my own and then ended up building what, what you're going to see today. And if you go to slide 38, this is Sandy. Um, Sandy's one of our members. It's interesting, Sandy. I, I really like her in, in looking at her story because when Sandy first came in her first three weeks, she's five or six weeks into the program now, but her first three weeks into the program, she was actually really frustrated. She came and her partner came on a call with me and they're like, well, we got all these leads, but we haven't like the, the deals aren't converting. I don't know if this thing really works. And I had to dig in and really assess the conversations that were happening. And, and then I gave her this hack that I'm about to show you to give her a breakthrough. Well, fast forward a little bit. She went from week three to week five, and then she submitted this post inside of our Facebook group. She said, Submitted for the deal of the week, three signed contracts this week. Nice. And then she's got a couple more in negotiation. So um, I'm going to get to the hack in just a, a minute here. But the thing with Sandy, the biggest problem, she didn't like need a bunch more leads. She didn't, she just needed to focus on her quality leads. And so whenever someone tells you like, oh, you got to get more leads, more leads, that's not the answer. The answer is actually just get quality leads, get sellers coming to you, asking you for help. Well, most of our competitors other real estate investors are running around out there and driving for dollars and kind of like doing the buddy buddy or sucking up to realtors chasing deals. We can instead be uh, responding to inbound leads and talking to them. And if you go to slide 41, um, I want you guys to meet Scott. So Scott is a, he's a unique individual. Um, this guy's actually, he's been a successful real estate investor in the past and he was just having trouble shifting to like the modern era. And uh, about a year and a half ago, he ended up buying one of those franchises, um, one of the, the big franchises that does real estate, like marketing and help and structure and all that kind of stuff for real estate investors. Well, when he started seeing me posting and talking about how we're using social media and he messaged me and he said, hey, how much is stuff costing? How much are leads? How much is the cost to get a deal? And, and I started telling him, showing him my data and he's like, no way, this is too good to be true. No, I'm with the best franchise company in the country. There is no way that you can get a deal cheaper than they can. And I said, well, how much are you paying for your deals? And he said, well, it depends, but anywhere from seven to $10,000. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's not possible. Like we pay 10 to 15% of that at most. Like it's a fraction of that. And depending on the market that we're in. And he's like, well, set me up, set me up. I got to see this. So we ended up setting him up, build this whole thing out. And then um, the next thing that I know he's getting conversions. Well, Here's what happened to make the conversions for him. Uh, if you go to slide 44, this is the this is the courthouse. When you see the courthouse, I just want you to think of probate sellers because probate sellers have to go through this long process um, called probate in the courthouse to get the property transferred from whoever passed away to their name. Yep. And um, we what we did for Scott is we really he he told us I really love these probate leads. These are my favorite. So when we started writing the ad copy, we, we really interviewed this subject and we said, okay, what is it that keeps this person awake at night? I'm not talking about like, yeah, I just need to sell the property. I'm talking about like, what is it actually that they wake up in the middle of the night thinking about? 
in a probate seller, if you just think out loud with me, Chris, what do your probate sellers think about at night? They are worried about having to even go. A lot of them don't even want to go back over to the house. Yeah, they don't want to go to the house. They don't want to go to the physical house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't even yeah. want to think about it. They, they want to, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sore form, big sore yeah. form. Memories and the stuff. I always hear with the stuff whenever I'm working with a probate seller, like, I don't know what to do with mom's stuff. And, and so when we start brainstorming these things, we actually write the ad copy. It's called copy. It's the text that goes in the ads. We write the copy around what keeps them up at night. What would wake them up at night? The other big one for probates that we often hear is, I'm tired of arguing with my brother and sister about mm. what to do with mom and dad's house. And so when we write the ad copy and what we did for Scott is we wrote the ad copy saying, uh, are you tired of dealing with the probate process? Don't know what to do with mom and dad's stuff. Are you tired of arguing with your brother or sister about what to do with the property? Hi, I'm Nate from Nate buys houses. I'm just giving you an example, but this is what yeah. we wrote in general for Scott. Hi, I'm Nate from Nate buys houses. I've been helping probate sellers for the last two years. I can help you too. And that's what leads into this. And this is where conversions start to happen for people. When you get specific into their world, try to try to really conquer what they're thinking. Nice. And if you go to the next slide, this is what Scott said after, after we got his campaign up and running. He said, hey, I just got two contracts. Uh, he even said in here, I was starting to get a little bit worried. But then when I got two contracts, I must say that this is working. And then a couple of weeks later on slide 46, I text him, hey, how you doing? He texted me back. He said, I had to turn it off. And I'm like, what? <laughs> dude, what are you talking about? And then I eventually got on the phone with him and I'm like, dude, what do you mean you had to turn it off? You told me you got two contracts. And he said, no, no. He's like, Nate, I'm getting so many leads right now. My team can't keep up. So mm -hmm. I'm only turning it on the weekends. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, great. That's cool. I can take that. That is cool. Okay, let's go to the hack. Slide 49. Okay, so cool. you... You've probably seen some ads that are out there that maybe they look something like this. Maybe they're a little bit different, uh, but you've definitely seen ads inside of places like the newsfeed and Facebook, maybe on Instagram and the stories, just a general ad catching someone's attention. That ad is all fine and great, and that can get some people's attention, but I want to show you how to really light the party up, okay? I want you to think of every single ad that you launch out there, and this is the hack right here. Nobody gets this. Um, I want you to think of every single ad that you launch as it being a party. You're inviting people to come look at it, come engage, come hang out with you. And at every single party, there's always a beginning period. If there's no conversation and there's no music, it's kind of dead energy, like kind of a boring party. And you can spice that party up as a party host. You can turn on the music. You can start introducing people. You can start the conversation. And you can do the same exact thing on your ads. If you can go to the slide 50. So on slide 50, you can see there's a comment thread that's below the ads. It's a little too small to see. So we'll go to slide 51. I might be able to zoom it in, Nate. Oh, 51's got a zoom in version. Okay. And so, um, oh, you see it now? Yeah. It's, okay. This is 51 here. Okay. 15, 51. So what, what's happening on, on 51, this is the comments below the ad. And what we're doing is we're seeding the comments. We're seeding the conversation. We're turning on the music to get the party started. So what I did is I just, I got a picture of me and one of the people that I work with on his house and stuck it on there. And then the next comment is me and another person that I work with on, on her house. And I stuck it on there. And if, I mean, we can go crazy with this, but if we've got a testimonial story, we can write out the whole story. At a minimum, though, we want to start the conversation. And this comment thread is such a valuable piece of that ad, and it's free. Like Facebook and Instagram, they both limit the number of characters you can have on an ad, but they do not limit the comments that you put on it. You nice. can have as many of these as you want on there. Wow. So this hack right here, when we started doing it, if you go to slide 52, we started doing it for, for Abuela, which is grandma in Spanish. And um, this is my mother-in-law, Anna. And um, when Anna is here, then she likes to go out and participate too. So we have a whole brand built around her, Abuela Compra Casas. Grandma buys houses in Spanish. Nice. <laughs> She's good too. She, everybody loves her. Everybody wants to talk to her. I bet. The Spanish-speaking population. 
and so, but what we started doing this for her, she was the guinea pig and this just went crazy because people will start commenting. Then they'll start asking questions. They'll start saying like, well, Hey, do you also buy in zip code 93206 or Hey, uh, my friend has a house. How could he get in touch with you? And they'll just start commenting and asking conversation. Whereas if we would not have started the party, then people are a little bit shy to even talk or shy to comment. But when you give a little bit of social proof and start that conversation, that ad hack right there, that will probably bring down your ad costs. It'll probably bring down your ad costs, I don't know, by 10 to 15%. But more importantly, it will increase your engagement on the ad. And when Facebook is looking at ads or organic posts, doesn't matter. When they look at those, they're looking for measurements that say, our users are having a good experience. Mm -hmm. If our users like this, we're going to show it more often for less cost. So that's the secret. That's the secret sauce right there for one of the biggest ad hacks right there. Okay. So to, to sum that section up, the, the real truth in this whole, like this with this whole ad hack is you don't need a whole bunch more leads. You just need quality leads and you can do it. And you can help fuel it by following that first ad hack. All right. We'll go to slide 54. Now, I, I love this one. Um, a lot of people will say, well, you know, Nate, everyone that I talk to, and I'll, and I'll even diversify, I'll go beyond just social media leads, but uh, any type of lead now, all sellers want market price. They want Zillow says as the value. And I want to break that down a little bit and give a hack for you. Um, I'll tell you right now that the leads that we're taking in, what is common with all of them, they might say, yes, I want market value. But really what I read that as is that they want to be treated fairly. No different than you might want to be treated if you decided to list your house for sale too. If you or I list our house for sale, we're going to want full price or market value and we're going to want to be treated fairly. Absolutely. So on the first touch base and the first phone call, we should expect to hear that on the phone. What happens afterwards to get a property at a discounted price or subject to or on terms is building a relationship with them. Let's get into that. Okay. If you go to slide 55 and Chris, thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, no problem. Brother. Okay. So on slide 55, this is a 1977 Chevrolet pickup truck. I know it's a beauty. Um, <laughs> my, my dad had one of these. This isn't his exact one. I couldn't find a picture of it, but my dad had one of these and he put it up for sale for 3000 bucks mm -hmm. on a good day. It was only worth 2,500 at that time. Maybe 2000 was probably more realistic. Well, anyways, he wanted three grand. He was stuck on his number. And I, and I wanted that truck because I had a painting business and I'm like, Oh gosh, I could have that truck. I could. And I told my dad, I'm like, dad, it's not worth three grand. It's only worth 2000. Can I buy it? And he's like, no. And then he had two other people come to him and lowball offered him. And he's like, no, no. And then I, I started thinking about it more. And I'm like, you know, if I could get that truck, I could also haul bigger ladders, which would mean for my painting business that I could get this bigger paint job that I really wanted to get. And then I could make more money. I would actually make enough money on two paint jobs to pay for that whole truck. And then anything after that would be profit. Hmm. So I went back to my dad. I'm like, Hey dad, I'll give you the three grand. And my dad said, you will. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and, and at that moment, I don't know if he heard the rest of what I had to say, but he, he shook my hand. And then I said, the thing is I don't have the three grand today, but I'm going to paint these two houses with the truck because I'll get a bigger ladder and then I'll pay you off. And he was just happy that he heard three grand. He shook my hand and I had his truck. Uh -huh. And I did exactly that though. I, I went out and I painted the two houses. I, I won the money or got the money from those two houses. I came back, I paid dad off. And that was my first seller finance deal. I didn't know it was seller financing at the time, but that's what seller financing is. Mm -hmm. and, and for anyone right now that's thinking to themselves, like if you hear a seller like my dad, that's like, oh, I want three grand or I want 300,000. Even if that is market value, Think about it from a business perspective. If you could get that house for $300,000 and your monthly payments on it were a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, and you're able to rent it for $2,000, meaning there's positive cash flow, and you had to put no money down out of your pocket to get it, would it be a good deal to you then? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Chris, this is something that you've mastered. And, and a lot of people, um, this is like, this is game changing for me. I didn't learn this stuff in the beginning. Like I was taught you go make low ball cash offers. And nowadays, like I don't, I will not go make a low ball cash offer. I might, 
I might end up buying it for a lower price, but I'm going to talk to the seller. I'm going to show them open book and we're going to get there together. And, but the low ball cash offer is like a punch in the gut. Mm -hmm. And you can expect people to get pretty mad if you punch them in the gut. If you instead, mm -hmm. you treat them like I treated my father and build a little relationship with them, maybe you'll walk out with a zero down deal. Okay. Gotcha. If you could go to 56 for us, um, this is another fun one. I, I got this one, I don't know, I, we closed about three weeks back now, but I bought this one during the peak of the whole COVID thing. I only highlight this one specifically because I never met the seller, never once. I never met the buyer. I wholesaled it. And I did the whole deal 100% sitting from where I'm sitting right here right now. I didn't physically have to go anywhere. The seller was really sensitive about COVID during that time. Um, and so I said, hey, tell you what, I don't even need to come walk it until the inspection period. And then during the inspection period, I'll send somebody. And then the seller said, okay, we signed the contract. I then turned around and found a buyer through using ads just like this, like we're teaching. And then the buyer said, hey, okay, I just need a quick walkthrough. The buyer went and walked the house during my inspection period. He came back, signed a contract, and then we closed it a few weeks later. And um, this, nice. like, I, I don't know when this business has been able to be done like this before until now. And we've entered this new era. It's a new way of doing the business, but it's totally possible. And I, I bring this up because some people like you, Chris, they're in an expensive area. Like you're in a, you just said it, like your market for ad price is one of the highest in the country. Yep. And in a way that you could get out if you didn't want to uh, fight in the more competitive market is you just start running ads in a different market. That's right. You're absolutely right, Nate. Yeah. If we could go to 58, we're going to break into the next hack in a moment here. And it's kind of like comparing when we talk about this old way of doing the business versus the new way, it's kind of like comparing the VHS cassettes to watch a movie versus watching Netflix now. And if we go to 59, an old way is cold calling. And it goes something like this. Hey, you want to sell your house? And then the seller says, no, take me off your list. And that's just kind of the reality of, of cold calling. I mean, you don't get yelled at all the time, but some people are fairly rude. I will never cold call again. Like, I, I don't want to be in that. I'd rather have sellers come to me that ask for help. They scream at you for sending the mail too, Nate. It, it, it isn't just, well, from my experience, it's not just cold calling. Shoot, somebody, I've had people telling me don't mail them anymore. They get mad at you for sending them a piece of mail. That's so funny to me. Like, I, I had a guy that do that, did that to me. I did a direct mail campaign drop a year ago, a big one with a partner. And um, I had a guy that called me and he, he reamed me out. What are you doing? How'd you get my address? And, and then after I hung up, I just thought there sat there thinking i'm like i wonder if he calls home depot and home depot sends him postcards yeah like, or pizza hut or whatever mcdonald's all like craziness yeah yeah so uh slide 60 61 and 62 th these are some of the the old ways of doing this stuff now some of these will have a time and a place when they work again they will like auctions are a great place if you want to learn auctions make sure you subscribe to this channel. Like I've learned more about auctions from Chris than anybody in the world. Uh, there will be a time and a place when it makes sense to be there full fledged. For me right now, social media is working so much better. Um, people are home, they're stuck, uh, stuck more than they were before. The phone usage, the consumption that we have on our, our smartphones now is up through the roof. People are glued to these things. Mm -hmm. Facebook alone, is toting the fact that they have 62% of Americans, that's more than half, now on their platform for 35 minutes a day. And if you figure out the like the math in that and start comparing it to other networks, and when I say networks, I'm not talking about just social, I'm talking about compare it to CBS, NBC, TV, yeah. yeah, all of them. Not many can say that I've got half of America for at least 35 minutes a day, half of America. So it's a very powerful platform. And if you go to slide 64, what most people do when they get into this real estate business is they bounce around. They try cold calling, expired listing, probates, banded signs, realtor offers, because I get it. Like I, I, I went through a similar journey. Like you hear about this shiny object and you chase the shiny object, but like the one that most people skip is Facebook ads because Facebook ads cost money. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, that cost money. No, I'm not going to do that one. I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> And, it, and it's funny, like some of us will submit realtor offers ahead of Facebook ads because realtors are free, right? 
in, uh, it's funny, if you Google search the Jackson Fuller study, Inman published an article on this, but the Jackson Fuller study did a breakdown of this whole realtor side of the business, the on-market stuff versus the off-market stuff. Mm -hmm. And they found that on average, houses that are sold off-market trade for or sell for 23% less than houses that are on-market. So on a hundred thousand dollar house, that's twenty three thousand dollars more that people yeah. are paying on average. Mm -hmm. So there is a significant cost to going out with a realtor to buy houses. A very significant cost. You pay a lot more. And so this new way of doing this stuff is really uh, it's social media. And um, to kind of wrap up this this little section, and move on to the next one, so we can get the hacks out. Is you really just want to treat sellers fair. The next time you get a seller that is stuck on their ways, think about my dad. My dad's a very stubborn man. And until I told him his number, I wasn't going to get any positivity or yeses out of him. And I got a yes as soon as I met his number. And some sellers are that way too. Exactly that way. If we go to slide 67. Now, a lot of people think that, well, they think if I'm going to get into social media stuff, I have to be an expert or I have to have this big following. And I want to bust that myth completely and entirely. Um, the truth is, is that our ads and our offers really just have to come from the heart. They have to be authentic. They have to be who we are. And I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that journey. We've taken people literally, uh, if you could go to slide 68, we've taken people like uh, Lou. Lou's got a big social presence, right? But when Lou asked us to take him onto the internet to buy houses like this, he didn't, he didn't want to use his his public brand at all. He wanted to just use a no name brand. So we took him from zero followers on a brand new Facebook page to 14 days later, he had a bunch of seller leads coming into him. And then uh, slide 70, this is a, another mutual friend of ours, Ron Legrand. Ron, he was really particular. He didn't want his name to be in front of uh, sellers, not at all. He wanted to just be like vis invisible. So we're literally running ads under my wife's name, Jennifer Buys Houses for Ron. And, and Jennifer is a no name, like nobody knows who Jennifer is, especially in his market, because his market's completely different than our market. And, but it still works the same. Like we go from zero to pretty large following or leads coming in within 10 to 14 days, no problem. Hmm. Um, if you go to slide 72, <clears throat> um, we've taken in a lot of the franchise people. I mentioned the, the previous one, Scott, a while ago, but We've had other real estate franchisees come to us, not McDonald's, but literally real estate franchisees. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're all blown away at how we can do this stuff because they're used to paying a more of a premium for their marketing. But when you get direct, man, the costs just come down a lot. And then slide 73, this is uh, Jen and Joe Del Fav. Um, I love these two. Like these two, they actually have taken what we started them on and they develop another hack to it that I want to share with you. Their hack is that Every Thursday from the campaign that we created, now they've got their page up, they've been doing lives on their page every Thursday. And the one Thursday, they talk about how they're buying houses. And then the next Thursday, they talk about how they're selling houses rent to own. So their strategy is buy them subject to, and then turn around and sell them rent to own. And um, in our program, like they're, they're a winner of the deal of the week award and they've gotten several deals out of it. But what's really cool is that Joe who was a corporate guy for a long time. He just came home to work full time with his wife now. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They get to fulfill a, a lifelong dream that they wanted. He's, you know, he's, he told me when I spoke with him last week, he said, you know, Nate, I, uh, I had this on my list for a lot, a long time and I just never forced it to happen. But now this finally gave us the opportunity to do it. It's cool. All right. If we go to 75, and then we'll just kind of scroll through these because I want to make sure we get to that the hack itself. But 75, 76, th there are automations that you can do to a crazy level. And this is makes it, it very different than getting leads like cold calling. When you're cold calling, you can't automate that process. That's like somebody picking up the phone, dialing and calling and talking. When, when you get digital leads, you can bring them into your world and then you can nurture them for a while meaning you can send them automatic text messages, automatic emails, and this whole follow-up journey begins. We had one of our members came to us who had over 200 old leads. They were like dead leads from a year, a year ago or more. And he came in and we said, hey, 
you should really take those leads and put them into a follow-up sequence. And he said, well, what is that? And we showed him and he said, okay, do it. So we stuck his 200 leads into an automated follow-up process. And he ended up getting five deals out of that. Hmm. Five. Thought they were dead leads turned into deals. Okay. Um, now automations are great, but I, I want to talk for a second. Um, slide 80 about heart. Okay. All this stuff that we're talking about, this is great, but I, I want to give you a, a couple of the biggest hacks that you're going to need to make this real estate stuff work, okay? When we're making our offers, I want you to think heart. I want you to picture the train that you see in front of you. This is a steam engine train. A steam engine train, in order for it to move, it takes 50,000 pounds of pressure to go through the pipes and push those wheels on the rail to pull that big load behind it. In order to do that, they have to heat up coal or the old ones were wood, but nowadays it's coal and they heat that coal up so that it boils water and that the boil, boiled water creates steam that goes through this pipe that has so much pressure in it that it can pull 50,000 pounds. Now you might think to yourself like how on earth does 50,000 pounds of pressure go through a little pipe without that pipe exploding? It's because the engineers put a little thing on it called the safety valve and the safety valve is what, what flaps open anytime it feels there's too much pressure in the room or too much pressure in the pipe. It just opens it up and then no explosion happens. The train can keep moving right along the tracks. Now, when you go meet with a seller, you gotta use heart. I wanna teach you something Chris taught me, okay? Chris taught me that when he goes to the house, the first thing that he says when he gets there is, hey, Mr. Seller or hey, Mrs. Seller, you know, some, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to buy the house or not. Sometimes these things work. Sometimes they don't work. That's from you, right, Chris? Yeah, you don't, you don't know. And, and that this is your pressure relief valve. So practice that as soon as you get to the house, let the pressure out of the room, because I assure you this, there's pressure there. You might not feel it. Maybe you don't get nervous. I still get nervous. Even when I, I was with the seller last Friday, when I was going in, there, I had a little butterfly in my belly. I, I, I turned on my voice recorder because I was recording it for some people and um, I had little butterflies in my belly and I'm like, okay, I, I hope That's that I don't funny. screw this up when I'm on record. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 but the first thing I said after saying hello was, Hey, you know, I'm here, I'm here to help. If this works great. If it doesn't work, that's okay too. Maybe I can refer somebody to you if, if it doesn't work between you and I, nice. and that lets the pressure out of the room because the seller, they're making a big decision. They're making a hun multiple hundred thousand dollar decision. And that comes mm -hmm. with a lot of weight on their shoulders. Okay. The next one, um, uh, we can actually go down. So I make sure that I get to the, get to slide 83 is follow up, follow up. Okay. Pro sales connection. It, they publish stats, on leads, follow-up and sales conversion. And I don't want to treat our business like it's this big, like sales stuff. Cause it's, it's not, but we do have to measure numbers kind of like it is. So I want you to, to understand this pro sales connection stated that 80% of all sales are made after the fifth contact. So that means at least five, five reach outs. Okay. Five follow-ups. And then to back that study up national sales executive association, they said that 80% of deals are made between the fifth and the 12th follow-up five to 12 follow-ups. If we go to slide 84, this is Leon on our group. Um, she also won one of our awards, the deal of the week award. Um, this property that she's citing right here that she posted in our group, she got this under contract after calling the seller seven times. Hmm. The seller first messaged her as a Facebook lead and said, Hey, I need some help. Can you help me? And she reached back out right away and the lady didn't answer the phone. And then she followed up again, lady didn't answer, followed up again, lady didn't answer. It was finally when she texted her, she sent her a text message just saying, Hey, how much work does the property need on the seventh try? And then the lady immediately replied. Now I want to talk about this for a second because a lot of people, when they jump in, number one, they wouldn't try seven times. They would give up after number two or maybe even number one. Um, but the second part about it is in this hack is that, text messaging is what got the lead to respond. Now, why I'm is notice, that? I'm noticing you got a different uh, communication level with Facebook leads too, Nate, as opposed to my direct mail and other ad, uh, other advertising means. The people on the internet communicate a little differently. <clears throat> you got it, man. 
You got it. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you're going on this journey too, Chris. Uh, so so the, these folks are communicating differently. Mm-hmm. Chris said it. So on a direct mail lead, it's it's a phone call. They're going to bite up the jump. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And on Facebook, these people are used to living in the digital world and they kind of like that like Facebook Messenger feel. They reached out to you by a electronic medium and sometimes the first contact is through electronic. Now, eventually mm-hmm. we're going to get them on the phone. There's strategies for that. And it doesn't mean that a lead is a bad lead if they don't answer the phone six times when you call them. And what it really means is this. Um, this happened to me. So my car, my Jeep got hit going through an intersection a few couple months back. Back end of it had was all busted up. I had to go to a repair shop. I had to get a couple estimates for the insurance company. I go around and do the whole estimate thing. Now I got these guys from repair shops that's calling me, calling me, calling me. And I'm so busy like doing real estate stuff. I don't want to call them back. I'm kind of annoyed. So I just started ignoring their calls. Well, I'll tell you the one that got the business was the one that actually sent me text messages. Mm. They text me. Hey, Nate, just checking on you. Did you want us to schedule the work on your, on your car, on your Jeep? And I text him back. I'm like, yeah, when could I? And then he had the whole conversation with me by text message. I didn't even talk to the guy. And next thing I know, a week later, I'm dropping off my car and he got, he got the job. He got the business. Hmm. And same thing here. Like these people are busy. It, just because they submitted the lead to you doesn't mean that they're a bad lead or just because they didn't answer the phone doesn't mean they're a bad lead. It just means that they got busy. They were interested enough to raise their hand and say, hey, I want some help. But now you got to get them their way and you got to get them when they're ready. Okay. So awesome. If we go to slide 86. Now, a lot of people will ask me, well, Nate, well, this whole Facebook stuff, it costs money. Well, how much does that ad cost? And if we go to slide 87, um, I want to help, help level set what you should and shouldn't be paying. So you've got a good benchmark to do on social media. Okay. For ads, ad lead cost varies from market to market. Chris just said he's in one of the most expensive markets in the country. So his leads, his cost per lead is probably higher than most people that are out there. Yeah. Leads vary from five bucks to a hundred bucks a lead. That's the truth of the matter, but that's a really bad measurement. The most important measurement is something that we call return on ad spent. And it works like this. If I put in $1 into the machine and I get $4 back out, I have a four X, a four times return on ad spent in the marketing world. That would be considered to be really, really good. So in real life, I put some numbers to it. Let's just say that we're wholesaling. If I put in a thousand dollars and I got out $4,000, would that be a good trade of my money? Chris, if you could put in a thousand and get 10,000 out, would you do it? Yeah, I do it every day. Every day, as fast as you could. Yep. And, and that's, that's what we want to look at. Like I, I don't get into so much like cost per lead because it's a bad measure. It's when I close a deal and I monetize the deal, meaning I either sell it on a, a rent own and I get a down payment or I sell it as a wholesale deal and I get a big fat check up front. I'm looking at that number versus how much I put into advertisements. And if my number is really healthy, in the industry standard, if they if you get a four x return on investment, that's considered good. I'm aiming for more like an eight x. If I can hit a ten x, I'm happy. Uh, if I can break that, it's even better. But it, industry standard says that you're supposed to get a four x return on your money when you do advertisement stuff like this. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, next one. Some people will ask me on eighty eight. Well, what about time commitments? And um, I'll I'll tell you this on slide eighty nine. This stuff actually saves time. It takes a little bit to learn it. it. takes a few weeks. We actually get most people up and running in under 10 days. Um, but once you got that down, like once you figure out how to fly this, this plane and we teach how to be a pilot for it, then it's pretty easy. The The time commitment is, is, is very low. You got to reply to some comments. Um, and then once you get into the real estate side of it itself, it's almost like any other channel. You've got to actually go meet the seller. That's what takes a little bit more time. It takes more time than the ad, ad work itself. Slide 90 has a picture of uh, Moses. Does anyone remember, and you can drop this in the comments, did Moses ever make it to the promised land? Did Moses ever make it to the promised land? What do you guys think? Did Moses make it to the promised land? I don't see anybody like charged in yet. Did Moses make it? Chris, did Moses make it? 
Nah, I don't think he made it, Nate. Nope, he didn't make it. He didn't make it because he was th- he had an old way of thinking. His old way of thinking basically uh, led him to die in the desert with his generation. And it wasn't until this new wave of thinking came along that they were able to cross over into what, what God had promised them. And interestingly enough, with, with when Moses, even in his era, he sent 12 scouts to go look at the promised land, to size it up, to say, hey, is it safe for us to cross over? And two of the scouts came back and said, yeah, we should go, we should go. But then there were 10 of them that were like, no, no, don't do it. They're, the people there are monsters. They're giants. We can't make it. And because there were the 10 that outnumbered the two, Moses took that and said, you know what? We've got to listen to the majority. We're not going to go. We're going to stay put here. And then that forced him to die in the desert. Now, this real estate stuff is a lot like that. And we should learn from it. Um, when finally the Israelites were able to go to the promised land, those two, Caleb and Joshua, were the only two of those scouts that actually got to go to the promised land. The rest of the 10 died. They died They died with their generation. Now, when we jump into this real estate investing world, I can promise you that there's going to be a million of the 10 out there that are telling you don't do it. No, we can't go. We can't go. It's too risky. It's too dangerous. I went through the journey myself. In 2007, I had my, my job at Target. And I really wanted to do real estate. And I kept saying to my parents, I'm going to go do this. And they're like, are you crazy? You've got dental, medical, 401k. No, you the real estate? No, <laughs> you're crazy. Uh-uh. And, and I ended up doing it anyways. But the thing is, is that most people will, they'll get stuck listening to the 10. And what I don't want anyone to happen, we're on, we're right here on the, the brink of 4th of July, right around the corner. This is the halfway point through the year. This is the chance for you and I to be able to draw the line in the sand and say, you know what? Maybe I didn't hit my goals so far, but the rest of the year, I'm going to do it. I'm going to push. This is where I draw the line in the sand. I'm not going to die in the desert like Moses did. I'm going to get to the promised land just like I'm supposed to get to. And Chris said it earlier, but you've got to draw the, you've got to actually say it's going to be now if this is for you. Okay. Um, that's the only way to make this real estate stuff work. You just say, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to make this stuff work. Now, how do you know if you need help with any of this stuff? If you go to 95 for me, I want you to ask yourself these questions. Do you know how to do this business remotely? And when I say remote, I mean, it's because some sellers, they're not COVID or they're COVID sensitive. Like they don't want people in their house. Yeah. So you got to be able to navigate remotely. Do you know how to run engagement ads? Do you know how to set up a business manager in Facebook? Do you know how to create a Facebook instant form? Do you know how to get leads from Facebook straight to your cell phone by text message? <clears throat> Do you know how to automate this stuff? Do you know how to have your leads sent to your call center or your VA? Do you know how to respond to comments on your ads? In slide 97, um, this is an apartment building that we got to do because of our off-market marketing like this. And um, this one was pretty cool. We picked this one up for 700,000 and we sold it to a gentleman for 800,000. I was going to keep it, but this guy really wanted it. So we made our six figures on it. But then the guy came back to me and three months later and he said, Hey, Nate, I really don't like the tenants here. Can you help me sell it? And so I said, okay, I'll help you sell as long as we get paid on the back end." And he said, yeah. And so we put it up for sale using the same marketing techniques that we always do. And next thing we know, we resold it for 1.2 million. Now, I illustrate that story because remember, we bought this thing for $700,000 and we were able to turn around and sell it in a pretty short window of time for $1.2 million. Um, I would have never gotten a deal like this going through the MLS or going through a real estate broker to get the deal. It just wouldn't happen. There's too much competition. But because of off-market marketing, we're able to get a seller to come to us directly, have a conversation and pick up a pretty good deal. And um, the seller on it, when he sold it to us, he was ecstatic. He was a really tired landlord. He'd got it, got it a couple decades earlier. And for him, he was making a mint on, on that. Okay. Next question on 98 is, do you know how to do the pixels retargeting ads? Do you have a plan for running Facebook ads and not losing any money? And do you know how to scale these ads? And if you answered any of these questions with, I don't know, um, or <laughs> <It's> me. <laughs> then, then um, just like Chris did, the, the obvious answer is you get somebody to help you. 
And I'm not talking like you have to use someone like me or uh, another agency, but I'm going to give you some guidelines on who you should use to help you with this stuff. And if you could go to slide 102, this is the Israelites crossing into the promised land. They started thinking new with this new generation, and that's what got them there. And and I want folks to, to really get that analogy. Like, if you're trying to do real estate and it hasn't worked before, there's probably a reason for it. It was probably using either outdated techniques or uh, outdated thinking. And that may have been what held you back in the past. But the social media stuff, this new path, this stuff works. It works really, really well. Okay. I'm telling you, I feel for anybody that's doing direct mail. I mean, I'm no doubt it's still working, but uh, even with the courthouse systems, you can't even pull files out of there. You can't pull any files right now. Talking about your, I'm looking at your your image here, the old yeah. way and the new way. I'm like, man, if you send out direct mail, I'm gonna just pray for you. Yeah, I did. I did a forty eight thousand dollar direct mail drop last year, and I partnered with a guy on it, and um, we ended up getting zero deals out of Good the Lord. Yeah, it's the first time in my life I've ever been totally skunked. Mm. And and I made some miscalculations. Like I, I went for absentee sellers in a market that had a bunch of vacation rentals. Nah. And so I it was a bad mistake on my end. And believe me, the other guy, he rubs it in my face every chance he gets because he, he's like, Nate, you're the real estate expert. How do we miss so bad? And 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 I feel bad because it wasn't just my money, it's his money too. And mm. um but Facebook, thank God, has been the only saving grace to like pull us out of that gotcha. and, and get us more deals. But uh, so I'm particularly sensitive to direct mail. Like I know it Me can too. work. It's just you got to have big budgets and you got to have stamina for that. Me too. I've been running direct mail. Anyway, we won't go there. Cool. Um, so, so when you're looking for someone to help you with all these challenges that I just presented you, I, I challenge you to do this, okay? Make sure that the group that's going to help you, that they're not just getting their results from being either an agency, like I failed to do, like I hired three agencies and they weren't the right ones. And um, they got to be actually doing the business. They got to be living the business. They've got to be a real real estate investor because that's who's going to be able to help you and give you the best guidance. Do, okay? uh, is this another slide, Nate? Yeah, we're on 107. Oh, okay. You can okay. move if you want or you can stay. Either one. Yep. Okay. Uh, next question to ask yourself is, um, are the people that they're working with, are they getting results? You want to make sure that they're actually, um, what they're preaching and what they're doing is actually working for people. And then number three is, has this worked for at least half a year? You don't want something that's like a flash in the pan. Like I, I saw somebody the other day that was doing some type of Pinterest ad. And when I reached out to them, cause I'm always looking for new methods and I reached out to them to find out how long it's been working. And, and from what they told me, it was less than a month. And for me, I'm not ready to jump in if it's less than a month. I want to see some proven track record with it. And the next one is, have they broke a lot of deals? Have they done a lot of deals? Um, you want to, to surround yourself with folks that are thinking at the level that you want to be at. The last thing you want to do is get with someone that basically is, is doing something at the same pace as you or at a lesser pace than you. Um, it's part of the reason why I love coming here with Chris, like, Chris is operating at a high level. The people that he brings on his show, like every week, I, I enjoy hearing those conversations and, and learning from them because it's operating at that wavelength that I want to be at. So the same thing, like if you're going to get into this Facebook and social media side of stuff, make sure you choose a group that is operating at the level that you want to be at. Yeah. And on uh, slide 108, um, I say all these things because I do hold myself to these standards. And um, anyone that comes into our program, they know it, they see it. We test these ads thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars per ad gets tested before anyone uh, gets the ads put into their ad account. I, I don't want to gamble with someone else's money. I want to know that the things work before we install them anywhere else. So we test, 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 make sure it works, optimize, and then we roll it out to, to our members. Well, that's how we do it. And we're doing something kind of special. Chris, is it okay if I share what we're doing for the for Independence Day? Yeah, let them know what you got, my brother. Awesome. So so Chris gave me a little challenge here, and uh, we're on slide 109 now. Okay. Chris gave me a little challenge that for Independence Day, Chris really wants financial independence for you guys. Yeah. So when we started talking about this, he, he said, Nate, hey, like for, for my people, 
can you do something really special? Like I, I want to make sure that they're taken care of. Chris is obviously someone that's uh, used our product right now and he's getting leads come in, but he said, Nate, I want to make sure that they're really, really taken care of. This is a big deal, financial independence. What can you do? And so we started thinking about this and um, I'm going to give you this link now and I'll give it to you again in a little bit. But if you want to inquire with us and explore what we might be able to do for you, the link is socialmediablueprint.com slash independence. I'll go ahead and put that in the video description too. Link down to uh, uh, Nate in the video description below as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, so here, here's how it works. I'm going to, if we could flip to slide 110. We, we've got this really beautiful platform. It's a platform that I wish someone would have had built up when I went on this journey. The most important thing is that um, number one thing that we do is we build this whole done for you ad campaign that's literally replicating what works best for us inside of our investor members ad account. Okay. Um, that's the first thing that we do. Then we get into lead forms and launching all of the automations and basically program this whole thing so that seller leads are coming into our members inboxes. They can come by text message. They can come by email, whatever the, whatever the individual wants, we can make happen. But that whole thing gets built out for them. And that's, that's like the number one service that we do. But for independence day, we wanted to, to go above and beyond because Chris gave us the challenge. So we got a couple extra things. Um, we're doing this. Like if you use that link, that's there. That link is good now until Sunday. So if you're watching live now, I, I'm going to give you a reason to, to click it and book with us now. If you're watching live over the next couple of days, you'll definitely want to grab a spot by Sunday at midnight, end of day Sunday. That will disappear. The page will be down. You'll get forwarded to a different page that'll say, I'm sorry, this is no longer available. But by Sunday at midnight, you get the following bonuses with us. Okay. Number one is a golden ticket. What a golden ticket is, and this is something that's worth, it's worth over 200 bucks. Actually, if I wanted to get um, a golden ticket, which is a phone call one-on-one -on -one with Chris, Chris, how much would you charge for that? Yeah, it's 200. 200 bucks. I had the time to dupe it so many, you know. Yep, yep. And it, it's same thing. Like, and, and, and I would actually happily pay that because um, when you're getting knowledge at that level, it's actually worth more than a, an attorney's time to me because yeah. you're the guy that produces the income. The attorney is the guy that takes money out of my pocket usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so uh, we're giving that for free. And um, I asked Chris, like I'm volunteering that time. And I asked Chris if it was okay if we counted him in for that too. And he said that he'd, he'd do it too. Um, so I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you for, for helping people that decide to look at our program. Yeah. Golden ticket. The next one is a boost call and, uh, our folks get two of these and what a boost call is, is it works like this. Um, myself and five other people inside of our program, we help our members really get ramped up in this program quickly. Okay. When you're getting seller leads in, there's three things, there's leads, there's calls and there's offers. And we want to make sure that you're equipped, that you know what to say, when to say, how to say it so that you convert these things. There's a big difference between someone that maybe they take five leads to make a deal happen versus someone that needs 30 leads to make a deal happen. And usually what it boils down to is what we say, when we say it and how we say it. And so on these boost calls, we're going to help boost your performance by giving you one-on-one -on -one time that we can actually go through and, and see what you're saying and, and help restructure it so that you get the best conversions possible. Okay. Nice. The next thing is um, I'm going to give uh, the negotiating audio and I don't have a cool title for it, but here's what it is. Um, I've been recording myself going on site with sellers and how I present the offer. Smart. And this is like, uh, I wish someone would have showed me this when I first started, but it's a really big deal. When we go through, I've got this right here. This is a PowerPoint presentation. I just printed it out so it's visual. And sometimes my iPad doesn't work when I'm on site with sellers. So I print this thing out and I go through it slide by slide with the seller. And I'm talking and I'm explaining. And um, so this negotiating audio, not only will you see me get deals signed, or you'll hear me because I recorded myself on it, but you're also going to get my, what I call the perfect presentation. This entire presentation is the slide deck that I use when I'm with every single seller. And then additionally, 
I present something to them that totally blows their socks off called the seller net sheet. This seller net sheet, it looks like a plain Jane uh, Excel spreadsheet to you right now, but what it really is, it breaks down every single number open book to the seller, including a line on there that asks and talks about our profit. And what I've found when I'm working with sellers is that if we're honest, if we're open and we tell them, hey, you know, I'm an investor, I do need to make a profit on this. What it does is it gets rid of that awkward pink elephant that sometimes floats around in the room. And so when we do that, connections made, trust is built. If you don't do that, then what happens is the seller is wondering why you gave them this low, low ball offer and distrust happens. You don't want that. Instead, let's give them the perfect presentation. Let's give them the seller net sheet. Let's walk them through everything so that we can come to a good number together. Okay. So that negotiate, negotiating part that's included with this as well. Um, and then I was, when Chris challenged me to, to, for these, I was saying, well, Chris, what else do you got, man? Tell me your good stuff. And um, Chris, is it still cool if someone signs up, if they jump in with us, that we can give them your private lending prospectus? Yeah, we're going to give them, I think it's 27 pages. This is exactly what we use to borrow, you know, just hundreds of thousands of dollars. You got to have a prospectus when you're borrowing money from people because talk is cheap. Don't nobody want to lend you a bunch of money when you're just talking to them. They want to see that you took time to be prepared. And, and so, Chris, is this like a, a PDF deck? Like you flip through it with them? PDF deck, yeah. And well, what we do is we print it out and put it in a binder and show it to them and give it to them when, after we after we may, after we have met with them. Absolutely. Wow, I I twenty seven pages. I can only uh, imagine that it lends way a lot of credibility to you when you're sitting there with them. Well, it's really not. I mean, it's not it's super. De it is detailed, but it's more or less just painting the picture of who you are. Like with the I, I love how you did those things with the credibility on the Facebook with the pictures. It's the same thing. You're just showing credibility what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then answer their questions. There you go. Yep. Man, I want that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want that, Chris. OK, so so that that's included as well. And then the last one, not not least by any means, is um, we're going to also include another training called the 17 ways to um, make offers or to buy houses. So everybody knows about the cash way, like you can buy a house with cash and deals done. Everyone also has probably heard the term subject to maybe you don't know the mechanics of it, but we're going to break that down. What is subject to really mean? How do you do it? What do you say to the seller? How do you say it to the seller? How do you present it? How do you write it out in the contract? Um, there's 17 different ways to structure that. Some people might call it rent to own. Well, what does rent to own really mean? Rent to own, there's no such thing as a rent to own contract. Mm -mm. People throw that term out, but there's really no such thing. So in that training, we actually get into it. We go through and, and walk, walk you through the whole thing. So that's included with this as well. Cool. So um, last but not least is this, um, whether someone is, and if we could go back to uh, 109, whether someone um, wants all these fancy bonuses or not, that's totally cool if you don't want them. If you just want to talk and you want to go through a marketing business plan for your business, then I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, a lot of people will ask, well, Nate, why on earth would you do a, a, a marketing plan? Like literally we'll write the marketing plan. We'll show you exactly what we're doing inside my ad account. We'll show you exactly what's working for us. And we'll write this marketing plan out and you have a choice. You can take that marketing plan and you can run, you can implement it yourself. And that's totally cool with us. If you decide to do that. Um, or if you say, Hey, I like the marketing plan and I like you guys, can you guys just build this whole thing for me? So I don't have to deal with it. Then we can talk about that too. And we're cool with either one. And here's why. Now, when you start meeting with sellers, you're going to find that when you add value to their life first, meaning you don't go in there with this like approach where I'm just going to take from them. I'm going to buy their house for the price I want. And that's it. Instead, if you go in and you say, you know what, what is the best situation for the seller? Should they be structuring a subject to deal or is it a cleaner deal if it's cash for them? What's maybe it's even, I'm going to refer them to a realtor. Maybe that's it. Like I, I just got a beautiful text message today from Cynthia. Cynthia is one of our sellers. We're closing with her next week. Cynthia is one. She's going to do a beautiful testimonial video for us. Like this is her texting me saying happy 4th of July and that she's going to do a testimonial video for us. Mm -hmm. But Cynthia, the first time that I talked to her, 
I assessed her situation. And I said, you know what, Cynthia, I'm going to refer my realtor friend to you because I think it's better for you that you get this sold on the market for top dollar. And what happened is I added value to her life first. And then what ended up happening is she came back and said, no, the timing doesn't line up. I want to work with you. Let's go with you. And then we ended up doing a deal together. And so when I'm talking about us jumping on the phone for a marketing call to help you with your business, it's genuine. We'll add value first, 100%. No different than when you're talking with sellers because there is a percentage of people that will always come back and want to work with you. Okay. So that's why we do these calls. I know that there will be a percentage of people that will say, you know what? I really like what you guys had to say and I don't want to build this stuff. Can you build it for me? So on those calls, and if you could show them um, slide 112, if you go to the socialmediablueprint.com slash independence, what it will come up is there'll be a questionnaire. You'll fill out the questions on the form and then slide 113. It'll bring you to a calendar. You'll be able to book a time. It's only myself and a couple of folks on my team that are actually qualified to do this because we have to be able to talk real estate and marketing. Remember, you can't just outsource marketing stuff to XYZ agency because they don't always speak the same language. So I've only got myself and a couple of people that can help. So time slots are a little limited. You'll see like before we jumped on this, we were already filled until Monday or Tuesday, but as long as you grab a spot, by Sunday at midnight, if you grab a spot by Sunday at midnight, then you will qualify for this. Okay, so grab a spot. Nate, so there, when they go to the link in the video description, mm -hmm. that is to set up a phone call, literally to talk to you. They're not. That's all that they're signing up for. They're not signing up for the for the training or anything. This is just to get into, maybe a forty five minute talk with you. You got it. Yeah, and thanks for clarifying that. Um, <laughs> that's, that's really the next step in the journey is let's, let's talk, let's lay out the marketing plan. Um, the first step, when you go to that page, it's a little sign up. You'll just put your name and your email there and then press, let me in. And then, uh, after that, there's a big button where you can book the call. Gotcha. Okay. I, the, the first page is there so that we know that they actually came from, from Chris's, from your show, from Chris Haskins channel. I don't know who else in the business, even me are taking phone calls. Nate. I appreciate you for doing that, my friend. Definitely. And a lot of people, a lot of people are saying that too, like the phone call thing, that era is gone, but it, genuinely add value, add value, add value. Serve it. Yeah. Time and time again, like you told it to me getting, when we were starting this broadcast, you said, I said, I asked like, I don't know how you just jump on to uh, YouTube and then all of a sudden magically there's hundreds of people there. I, I don't know how you do that, but you told me, you said, Nate, I'm serving. Like my aunt told me to serve, 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 constantly serve. And it's the same thing on these calls. These calls, they do cost money to put together the call to have a capable person there. But I know that if I serve enough people, there will be a percentage of people that come back and say, you know what? I really like that. Can you do it for me? And so it all works out in the end. Cool. All right. Is that all you got, Nate? Anything I'm ready for, I'm ready for questions. I'm ready for action. Action. I, I got to thank Tonya for your love offering. Tony, thank you so much. You know, I miss you guys out there in Vegas. Good seeing you on the broadcast. Roundup. Well, that was a mouthful. Nate, you have been an enjoyable to listen to. I love the, the way you talk, the words that you use. You're very systematic. And I, I know the decisions you make, the decisions you make are based on numbers. I can always, yeah, even when I'm talking to you off, you know, not on one of these things, you don't even speak unless you know the number. I'm like, Nate, what do you think about this? Um, well, we're going to do the, I have to go check, <laughs> gotta check the numbers to see. I love that about um, just the whole system, how you're putting stuff together, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And and, and we want to do the same thing. So we, we call them KPIs, KPI. uh, key performance indicators. And one of the best tools that I could ever give any real estate investor, especially starting out, is our KPI sheet. Um, and what it is, is it asks you how many leads came in, how many calls, how many offers, mm. three things, leads, calls, and offers. But if we track those three things every single week, that's how we know where we're going right and where we're going wrong. Okay. And it's, okay. it's easy for us to see, like if we're off two weeks in, just like right now, like this is the midway point in the year. This is the time, like we got to wake up. We, we can't wake up in November and say, oh my gosh, I'm off track. I'm not going to hit my goals. It's oh, right okay. now. Right now we wake up. So these KPI sheets, 
we measure week to week with our members and that helps us keep everybody on track with their goals. Alexandria, hey, nice picture. Uh, Nate, where is a good place to start for beginners? That's a vague one, but let's see if you can narrow it down a little bit for her. Yeah, and Alexandria, if you could give us a little little more detail on that. Um, if, I, if I'm answering from a where should I start in real estate, I would probably start in wholesaling. Um, I could make an argument for doing subject two as well, but wholesaling will at least get some cash in your pocket right off the bat. And it gives you the, it, it also provides a safety mechanism when you're in between a buyer and a seller, a buyer is not going to buy a deal from you, a real cash buyer. They're not going to buy a deal from you unless it's an actual deal. So it gives you a little bit of guide rails. And for me, like when I was wholesaling, I actually got to learn a lot from my buyers because they would teach me. They would say, oh, that's not the right area. Oh, you're paying too much. And so I would encourage you to wholesale and then learn, learn from the buyers as much as you possibly can until you're able to start getting into some projects that you can hold. That's right. Yep. Alexandria, another thing is when you learn how to make money without money, like wholesaling, Nate's saying, then you can make money with money. You know, that's what I've learned from me. Like if you don't have the skill to make money without money, once you get some capital, it's going to be a little, it's, it's a little more challenging. Round up, get your questions in. And if you want to book a phone call with Nate, just go right to the video description below. Click the button and get on this calendar. No stress there. Uh, what happens, Miss Allie? Who hi, Miss. Hi, Miss Allie B. So, what happens on the phone? go ahead, Nate. I'm sorry. Uh, what happens after the phone call? And, um, so, uh, I'll, I'm gonna answer on the phone call and after the phone call. On the phone call, we're talking marketing mostly where you want to get your business, what marketing it's going to take to get you there. And we're laying out that plan. Um, I'll also give you any, any perspectives that I can on the real estate investor journey. We'll go through that after the phone call. It's totally up to you. You can either take the marketing plan that we lay out and run with it, which some people do. And that's totally cool. Or you can say, Hey, can you build this for me? And um, for the people that we build it for you, it kind of depends on what you need. Some people, they need everything. They need a website. They need, ads built, they need a CRM. Other people are like, hey, I just need the ads. So that kind of just depends on, on what you need from there. But sure. we, we can talk through it on our on the call. The real namaste. Is there a cost for your program, Nate? Um, yes, there is a cost for our program. And you it very free. You can't do all this stuff <laughs> and for free. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I had to say that. It's free. It's free. Um, th there is a cost for it and it really depends on who the real estate investor is and what they need. Um, there's not a one size fits all approach to this stuff because it's some real people, estate. Yeah. And it, some people, they need everything. Some people, they need very, very little to get them up and running. Some people, they not only need the marketing campaign, but they need someone to walk them through what to say, how to say it, when to say it. And either one we're equipped and ready for. Um, so, but it, 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 it can vary for people. So it'd be, it do me a little bit injustice to you if I started quoting you numbers, because I have no idea what your setup is. I can tell you though, that usually in about 15 minutes, I can figure out what it would cost for you. Gotcha. Nate, that's all the questions you've got. What's your final thoughts you want to leave with my roundupers today? Roundup, go ahead, book your call. It's free on Nate's dime. Well, I'm taking care of this one today to get Nate on here for an hour and a half. But uh, uh, get your book your call with him. You never know. First time I talked to him, the way he listens, I talk, he's like this little. He, I call him the evil scientist. He's in the background just calculating all these numbers and what the, based on the words you tell him, it will direct you which way you need to go. Final thoughts, Nate, from my roundupers. Getting started, getting started, and want to draw the line into the sand. Financial independence. I told you earlier in, in our video. I'm, I'm thinking about when they when America wanted to break away from Britain. I'm like. Now you want to talk about uh, independence signing that piece of paper. That piece of paper was serious. Yeah, that was serious. At the risk of death, they knew that they were signing a death threat right there. Stopping it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my final thoughts is, number one, make sure you subscribe to Chris. Great dude, great mentor. You're already here, but uh, share the button, like it, be here, be present. And then uh, number two thing is we're halfway through the year. If, if there's a chance now for you to make a shift, I would make the shift if you need the shift. Like, just don't wait till the end of the year. It doesn't, doesn't work. You got to draw a line in the sand somewhere. And Financial Independence Day is the time. Give it a shot. Okay, Nate, that's all I got for you, my friend. 
Okay. Round up, make sure you click the video description, get your call, subscribe, like this content, share with any other investors that are thinking about taking the business seriously. This is because um, Nate's going to push you fast forward. It's like stepping on a light beam, getting your leads in. That's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye, everybody.